السلام علیکم الحمد للہ السلاۃ والسلام علی رسول اللہ آل دا پریزز از ڈیو ٹو اللہ سبحان و تعالی اینڈ دا بلیسنگس اینڈ سلیوٹیشنس بی آن ٹو محمد ابن عبد اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اما بعد ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو اسپیک اباؤٹ واٹ اسلام از واٹ ڈز دا مسلم بلیف یو نو اسلام ازنٹ اے نیو ریلیجن بٹ دا سیم ٹروتھ دیٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ریویل تھرو آل ہز پروفٹ ٹو ایوری پیپل ان ایوری نیشن اسلام از دا نیم آف دیٹ ریلیجن دیٹ مسلمس فالو پیپل ہو پریکٹسز اسلام آر کالڈ مسلم لائک وائز just like those who practice christian christianity are called christians but the literal and lexical meaning of islam means submission islam comes from the root arabic word silm which is also having the same root words of salam which means peace so islam is a natural way of life that encourages one to give due attention to the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. Islam teaches that it is through the doing of good deeds and seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that souls find true happiness and peace. In fact, Islam isn't a religion in narrow sense used by secular humanists in the West. <clears throat> But it is universal and eternal religion made known through prophets to every nation or people <clears throat> since the first human race, since the human race first began. This religion of Islam lays great emphasis on uncompromising monotheism and strict adherence to its creed and its method of worship. It enjoins submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and urges every person to follow as closely as possible the exemplary way of life of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, the last of the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, Allah defines that the only purpose for which he created mankind is to worship him. Islam recognizes that humankind has free choice in whether to obey or disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But ultimately, we will be accountable, we will be held accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life for the choices that we make in this life. Islam is named after the action of submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands and will and not a person, other religions are often named after a person. Like for instance, Christianity is named after Christ. Judaism is named after the tribe of Judah and Buddhism is named after Buddha. Islam isn't named after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because Islam existed before him. The masses of previous prophets such as Adam, Abraham, Noah and Moses was to submit to Allah. That means Islam. Hence the message of Islam didn't start with the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi It started with Adam and continued until today. With the passing of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send new prophets and messengers to remind mankind of his message. To worship him alone, Muhammad wasalam, him is the last of these prophets. Islam deals with every aspect of life, spiritual and physical. Its jurisprudence is based on creed, instruction, worship and ordinances dealing with social, economic and political transactions. 
Because Islam is a perfect way of life. It's a divine only way of life. It enjoins the maintenance of a refined standard of character. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said about what Islam is, which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim as a conversation between Prophet Muhammad and Jibril Islam is testifying that there is no true God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah performing the prayers, paying poor due or obligatory charity means jaka, observing the fast siyam of the month of Ramadan and performing the pilgrimage if we can afford it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed through his messenger that Islam is built on five pillars. What are they? Number one is the witness of faith means giving sahada. Number two, five obligatory prayers. Number three, the poor due or obligatory charity means jakat. Fasting or observing psalm and the final one is the pilgrimage, the hajj. Now coming to the point about what do Muslims believe? Muslims believe in six points. What are they? Firstly, Muslims believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the universe. The Arabic term of God is Allah. Sometimes Muslims prefer to use name Allah over God because Allah linguistically doesn't have a gender and can't be made plural. The English name God could become goddess or gods. The main message of the Al-Quran is that Allah is one. He has no partner child or helper. Then Muslims believe in angels. There are many angels that all obey Allah. Unlike humans, angels don't have free choice, free will and must obey all the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Different angels have different tasks. For example, uh, like the angel Jibril salam, was Responsible for communicating the message of Allah to human prophets and messengers. The angel Mikhail was responsible for rain. Angels also help and assist the mumin, the believers, in times of difficulty. Then Muslims believe in all prophets and messengers. A Muslim is required to believe in Adam, Nuh, Abraham, Moses, Daud, Joseph, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. They all came with the same masses to worship one Allah and not associate any partners with him. Muslims also believe in all previous scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to his prophets and messengers. Moses was given the Torah, Abraham was given the scrolls, and Jesus was given the Angel with the exception of the Quran no previous scripture is completely preserved in its original form with time many of these scriptures were lost or corrupted Al Quran was sent as the final statement and it functions as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's final message to mankind then Muslims believe in the hereafter, after life. There will be a day of judgment where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge, hold people accountable for their actions in this world. Those who did good will enter paradise and those who did evil will enter, will either be forgiven or punished in hell. Everyone will be compensated for their actions in this world. Lastly, 
Muslims believe in Allah's divine will and decree. Allah has knowledge of all things that will happen. He doesn't force humans to make decisions. We only choose what we want to do. However, there are certain things that Allah decreed and are outside of our control. These things include the time and place we were born, where and when we will die, and anything that happens that is outside our control. Muslims submit to these things as part of Allah's decree and will. Another belief in these six items is what makes a man Muslim. One might not practice Islam perfectly. They may commit sins and may make mistakes. But as long as they have this, these beliefs, they are considered to be a Muslim. Put differently, these are the most basic requirements of being a Muslim. Now, this is very vital to tell about. Does Islam tolerate other beliefs, other religions? The Quran says, Allah forbids you not with regards to those who fight you, not for faith, not drive you out of your homes from dealing kindly and justly with them. For Allah love those who are just. It is mentioned in Al-Quran chapter number 60 verse number 8. So it is one of the function of Islamic law to protect the privileged status of minorities. And this is why non-Muslim places of worship have priced all over the Islamic world. History provides many examples of Muslim tolerance towards other faiths. When the Caliph Umar anhu, entered Jerusalem in the year 634, Islam granted freedom of worship to all religious communities in the city. Islamic law also permits non-Muslim minorities to set up their own courts which implement family laws drawn up by the minorities themselves. Islam may seem exotic or even extreme in the modern world. Perhaps this is because religion doesn't dominate every life in the West today. Whereas Muslims have religion always uppermost in their minds and make no divisions between secular and sacred. They believe that the divine law, the Sharia, should be taken very seriously, which is why issues related to religion are still so important. Islam places great importance in the belief that the soul gives life to human body. Likewise, in its absence, the human body dies and disintegrates. However, the soul is eternal and will be reunited with the body on the day of resurrection when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise everyone to answer for their deeds on earth. Islam encourages the individuals to focus on keeping the soul healthy through the remembrance, obedience and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There should be a correct balance in strengthening the soul and not overindulging with the pleasures of the body. Now in concluding remarks, we can say Islam is the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for mankind. He said, which is mentioned in Al-Quran chapter number 3, verse number 19, the religion that is accepted by Allah is Islam. This means that message is universal. Due to this fact, man doesn't need to develop or devise new laws to suit every age and lifestyle, it's a way of life that affects every aspect of man's life, social and the political, economic, etc. Islam has a solution to every problem regardless of its nature and gravity.
it's a divine message which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Prophet Muhammad salam, to convey to the mankind. To man, he also revealed the Quran, his last book which comprises an unalterable constitution. Now, do you have read this booklet and become more acquainted with the central principles of Islam? It's up to you to make the choice. Everyone is headed for the same worldly end, but the route one chooses determines the other worldly destination, the destination in the hereafter. Whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him, and in the hereafter, he will be one of the losers. It is mentioned in chapter number 3 of Al Quran in verse number 85. Moreover, it is mentioned also in Al Quran chapter number 39 and verse number 22. This is he whose breast Allah has opened to Islam so that he is in light from his Lord. So, O to those whose hearts are hardened against remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are in plain error. Islam sets out for human beings a vision which is strikingly simple yet completely logical. Indeed, why would the creator of the universe should shroud in mystery? The main mass is that he wants humankind to understand the own one key to winning paradise in the hereafter. How then would he expect humankind to arrive at the truth? It's clear that human beings must revert to their basic instinct regarding the creator of the universe. They must shed the layers of indoctrinated ideologies and man-made teachings that covers that instinct. Humankind must reclaim its birthright, it must reclaim Islam. One hadith was narrated by Imam Muslim, it is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, hadith number 145, it is narrated from Abu Huraira who said the messenger of Allah said, peace be upon him, Islam began as something strange and will revert to being strange as it began. So give glad tidings to the strangers. It is a very important hadith. What the Prophet Muhammad told, Islam began as something strange and will revert to being strange as it began. So give glad tidings to the strangers. Al Sindhi said in Hasiya ibn Maza, strange refers to the small numbers of its adherents. The basic meaning of gharib, a stranger, is being far from one's homeland and will refer to being strange. It refers to the small number of those who will adhere to its teachings even though its followers are many. So, give glad tidings to the strangers. It, is mean, it means that those who follow its commands. Tuba means glad tidings has been interpreted as meaning paradise or great tree in paradise. This shows that supporting Islam and following its commands may require leaving one's homeland and being patient in bearing the difficulties of being a stranger as was the case in the beginning. In Sir Sahih Muslim, and now be quoted as saying concerning the meaning of this hadith, Islam began among a few individuals, then it spread and prevailed, then it will reduce in numbers until there are only a few left as it was in the beginning. It says in Fatwa Al-Lazna Daima in chapter number 2, 
page number 170, the meaning of the sadis is that Islam began as something strange when the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, called people to Islam, but no one responded except a few here and there. At that time, it was something strange because it's, its people were like strangers amongst others and they were few in numbers and weak. In contrast to the great numbers and strength of their enemies who persecuted the Muslims, then some of them migrated to Abyssinia, fleeing for the sake of their religion from tribulation and to save themselves from prosecution and oppression. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, migrated at Allah's command to Medina. After suffering intense persecution and in the hope that Allah will give him people to support him in his call and support Islam. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his hopes, granted victory to his troops and supported his slave. The Islamic State was established and Islam spread with the help of Allah throughout the globe. Allah made the word of Kufr lowest and the word of Allah is uppermost. For Allah is almighty, all wise and honor, power and glory belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger, peace be upon him and to the believers. This continued for a long time, then division and dissent spread among the Muslims and weakness and failure increased gradually until Islam once again became something strange as it was in the beginning. But this is not because of their small numbers, because at the time they will be many. Rather, it's because they don't adhere to their religion or cling to the book of their Lord and the teachings of the messenger of, of Allah, peace be upon him, apart from those whom Allah wills. So, they become distracted and turn to competing in worldly matters like those who came before them and they fight amongst themselves for leadership. So, the enemies of Islam found a way in and they colonized their lands, humiliated their people and treated them badly. This is the way in which Islam returned to being strange as it was in the beginning. A number of scholars including Sayyid Muhammad Rasid Rida thought that this hadith give glad tidings of a second victory of Islam after it becomes something strange again. They base, they base this on the metaphor used by Prophet when he said will revert to being strange at, as it began. So just as following the initial strangeness and alienation, the Muslims were victorious and Islam spread, this will happen again after the second period of strangeness, strangeness and alienation. This view is more likely to be correct and is supported by what is proven in hadith about the Mahdi and the descent of Isha at the end of time when Islam will spread and the Muslims will be victorious and Kufr and the Kafirs will be defeated. And Allah is the source of strength. May Allah send blessings and peace upon our Prophet Muhammad and upon his family and companions. Thank you all people for watching and listening this lecture about Islam. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi